Hey everyone, this is CVGS, Brandon here, bringing to you the highly anticipated BS53, Amazing Impact, the second main set booster of the Tensei era. This set was made to showcase some of the new cards that are going to be featured in the 5 episode Battle Spirits anime, Kakume no Gareto, or in, uh, in English, Garrett's Revolution. Our new protagonist, Garrett, is on the front of the box alongside Swordish Dragoon, ready for battle. The set also comes along with the 15 Zenonza collaboration cards as campaign promos and it also comes with the 20 sleeve pack yeah 20 sleeve pack that has Garrett and Dragoon inside so looking at the contents the pack the, the box contains 16 packs uh, we have 9 cards per pack and the rarities are as follows we have 45 commons 15 rares 12 master rares 9 x-rares 3 double x rays, 12 Tensei rare cards, and also 4 Tensei x rays, with Sodias being one of them. And also the 15 collaboration promo cards. Now, we shall look at the box on the front here. First, we have Garrett and Sodias, of course, because we want to advertise that new anime, Yeet Yeet. And on the back, we have the 3 x rays from uh, Yellow Red and Purple Origin families with the amazing impact written here uh, Lucifer, Tizarola, and Marciana These are very very nice looking cards So I can't wait to open this Now, let's take a look inside So on the inside of the box We have the 20 pack sleeve Looks really really sick With Garrett in his battle uniform and also Sawyer's Dragoon Dragon mode actually Looks really really nice It's a very nice silhouette And on the pack itself we have our nice gold accents with the close-up of Garrett and Swordish Dragoon. Really, really nice. Like every protagonist debut should be. Uh, and the back is the information of the pack itself. So now let's open this wonderful box, shall we? And we're back! So now that we have opened the box, and as per usual, we'll only be covering the extra and above cards. For more information on their translations uh, and the card list of BS53 itself, Follow World of Cards, link in the description below. So let's start with the Hidori no Sekai or Green World. So the Green World has a Tensei rebirth when your counters is 5 or less, when an opposing spirit or your spirit of cost 6, a green spirit of cost 6 or higher is exhausted, or when this nexus would leave the field by your opponent, you may send your soul core to this nexus and flip it to the other side and level 1 when this nexus is deployed uh, you add one call from void to your reserve and also uh, the other level 1 effect when you increase calls from your green effect from the family origin other than from this nexus instead of gaining the call you can draw the card from your deck so green usually pumps a lot of call and being able to transition some of that call boost into card draw is relatively amazing in a green deck in general so it's a really good card and on the flip side we have the uh, green nature green nature god so uh, on tensei or on attacks uh, you can send an opposing cost 6 or below spirit uh, exhausted spirit to the bottom of the deck and it has level 1 return to restoration when this spirit leaves the field through opposing effects you can uh, pay, uh, pay its uh, nexus cost and redeploy it and also uh, the other level 1 passive they has is the same as the green world which is whenever you gain cost when you gain call from your uh, green origin family cards uh, instead of gaining the call you can draw one card so it is per instance of effect so let's say if you have something that like adds two call at the same time but you want to convert uh, one to draw and one as and one leave it as call. You can't because it takes up the whole effect and change it to drawing one card instead. However, if you were to like play cheat and just use all the oh I pump one call then you just convert it to one draw then you just get the value of all that. It's a very very good card. And also the bot deck of uh exhausted cost six kind of helps against certain matchups in the meta considering how fast it is. Not a lot of stuff are above cost six. Well maybe after seeing this you might change your mind, but you know. It's always there. So moving on, the next X-ray we're going to cover is uh, the Yellow Rouse Emperor. Uh, 
yeah, the same Empress Magiana. So, uh, level one, two, three. When this spirit uh, is summoned or attacks, uh, during this turn, one opposing spirit ultimate uh, can get minus 10 kpp. You can repeat this effect as many times as the number of counters you have. Uh, if the BB becomes zero, destroy it. This effect can only be used once per turn. So how you will use Machiana here, and since she's a dark art spirit, um, you can use cards like the Desmophoros to resurrect her from the graveyard. And since uh, if you were able to trigger Desmophoros, you would have some counters already. Uh, Machiana can provide you some removal for the on summon. Or if your summon was on uh, on lock against certain matchups, you can use the on attack, and it does the same thing. And it's not bad. Uh, level two and three, when this spirit attacks, you can add one card from void to your life. So this is also not bad. Uh, level three during your attack step. When your life would increase, instead of increasing your life, you may send one life from your opponent's life to trash instead. So again, with all these, instead of gaining life, gaining call to life, doing uh, doing other things instead, if you were to gain like five life out of nowhere because uh, <laughs> certain decks can do it, uh, it still only uh, it will still only convert to uh, one uh, in a uh, one instance of damage to one life uh, means one life to trash only because. It's not per life you increase, it's whenever you do increase your life. However, you can abuse with cards like um, Necro, Necro Noblesse with uh, Pass Aphrodite to loop your opponent, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a very good card, it's a cost 7, it fits it well into the Demeter deck as well, so she can get double symbol, unblockable, all the good stuff. So, moving on to the next card, we have the Rousing Eccentric Dragon Bushroom. So, uh, it's a cost 6 blue origin that has when this spirit summon or, uh, summon or attacks, you can destroy one opposing spirit of the lowest cost. If, uh, if the destroyed spirit was destroyed during your attack step, you can add one cough or void to your spirits. Uh, in level 2, during your attack step, uh, when your blue pre rebirth spirits from the family origin, all pre rebirth uh, Nexus rebirths, Either select either a core step or draw step during your opponent's next turn, that step will be skipped. So the good thing about this card is that considering how fast uh, blue primals flip their uh, Tensei Nexuses or Tensei Spirits with like blue world, great ocean gates, uh, the chances of the level 2 locking off both the core step and the draw step is relatively high, which makes it really hard to play because usually uh, not a lot of decks have uh, relatively solid draw power and are relying on the draw that you will have <laughs> usually every turn. But with Bashlom, you can kind of shut them out with this and hopefully push for game like the next turn after that. Uh, the next x we have is Lakshmi's Avatar, the WBS Ace Ma Ma Mahadevi Goddess Lokomata. It is a fighting spirit avatar and it's also an origin. So, uh, it's effect, uh, when this card is discarded from your hand by the effects of your spirits containing the name WBS name or your Grand Walker Lakshmi, uh, instead of sending it to the trash, you can summon it as a cost 6. This gives me a little bit of that Gris Crash vibes, don't you? The only difference is that uh, you still need to pay cost to summon her, but considering how uh, WBS is, the there are instances where you literally can treat her like a Gris Crash during uh, when, if, if, if ever, because getting 6 reduction in Lakshmi was actually pretty easy. Uh, level 1, 2, 3, uh, when this spirit is summoned or attacks, you can destroy one opposing cost 8 or less spirit. In addition, if it was summoned by effects, during this turn, this spirit can be blocked. So this kind of synergizes with the first skill so that you can, you know, swing in and get to face faster. Also, level 2 and 3 during your attack step, for each counter you have, this spirit gains one additional blue symbol. So with this, right, you can literally use either Lakshmi or any of your WBS spirits to throw her into, to discard her. Summon her as a cost 6, uh, and she has like 6 blue reduction, so it can almost be free. And then nuke a cost 8 spirit, can't be blocked. Swing, nuke another cost 8 spirit, still can't be blocked, and have a bunch of symbols on her. It's a pretty good card. Uh, although it's quite expensive, but that's okay. The main use of her is to like discard her and get her out for free anyways. Okay, so moving on to the next X-ray, which is one of our, uh, what do you call it? 
campaign promos of the Olive Gods, our Pass Poseidon. So Pass Poseidon is a origin visited fusion beast, uh, and with every other Olim uh, Tensei spirit, they have the context of this card name is also treated as Grand Walker Poseidon. And it has level 1 2. When this spirit attacks, you can discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. And ignoring the Brave cost, uh, destroy one cost for uh, below spirit from your opponent's side. So, uh, and level 1 2 3 rebirth. When you have 5 counters or less, when your opponent's life is reduced, or during your attack step, you discard or banish cards from your opponent's deck. You may flip this spirit and send all the cards on it back to reserve because it will flip into the future Apollon. Yeah. Ah, uh, what Apollon? Bleh! Future Poseidon! <laughs> okay, so uh, now Future Poseidon has a. Uh, it has a cost charge of uh, blue. Any blue spirits. Uh, charge through summon or uh, radiant descent once per turn. Um, it's not bad because it's a it's meant to be played in a lot of blue decks anyway, mostly Poseidon, and it kind of have quite good utility because when this Nexus rebirths, you can banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck for each spirit card that was discarded. You can add one call from Void to this Nexus, so it's not bad because it can help you like feed your Great Ocean sometimes if you don't have your original Grand Walker and like we all know our lovely Poseidon players want to Great Ocean very badly. <laughs> and the Grand Skill for level 2, flash during uh, either player's attack step by sending 4 cards from this Nexus to the Void. Uh, ignoring the Brave cost, destroy one opposing uh, Spirit of cost 6 or less. So again, because of meta relevance, cost 6 is a very nice number to hit now. So being able to touch cost 6, uh, especially ignoring the Brave cost is very very nice because that's a, uh, that's a range where a lot of uh, Mid-game finishers would be like, Bashlom is one of them as well. Uh, okay, next card we have here is one of the Zenonzad collaboration spirits. And his name is... The King of Deep, Elizan. It is a... Uh, Ocean Emperor slash... Uh, Ocean Emperor Ocean Prime slash... Uh, and Minion. Uh, Minion is the new uh, archetype given to the Zenonzad spirits. Because in the game of Zenonzad, your creatures slash spirits are not... Spirits, they are called minions instead. So the family is carried over. Uh, in fact, level 1 and 2 when this spirit is summoned by sending three up to 3 cores other than your soul core from your field or reserve to void. For each core sent to the void, you can summon one spirit card from your hand or open zone without paying the cost. However, the on summon effects don't activate. And level 2 when this spirit attacks, send one opposing spirit to open zone. So this, uh, his text here is in relation to his Zenonzad uh, effect, which was, if I'm not mistaken, he was able to Summon cards from your mana zone in Zenonzad, the base area, and when and on attack, he can send your opponent's minions to their base area as well. So, translating that into battle spirits, your base area is your open zone. So sending cards to open zone is not bad, especially if the the card was a burst or a radiant descent spirit because. Uh, you can't radiant descend from open zone, you can't set burst from open zone. So this card is not bad, relatively aggressive. Uh, quite difficult to pilot however, but when done right, it's very very deadly. Good card. Um, next we have the Grand Walker. We are very lucky to open this one in our box, because Dempster would love this. So we have our Nonoin Nilon. Uh, the uh, family being Grand Walker Diva, Codeman. Yeah, everyone was excited when they heard Diva. <laughs> so, uh, he has the same usual text of Grand Walkers. This Grand Walker can't be affected by effects that, uh, that other than effects that specifically target Grand Walker Nexuses uh, and Call Charge effect, blah blah blah. Cost can't be moved by the effects that other than the target. Anything, as long as anything that were to target a Nexus, it has to specifically target a Grand Walker Nexus touch as per usual. Uh, call, the, her Call Charge, however, is relatively interesting. Cost 3 or higher, so it can be any spirit. Uh, however, the number of cores she can hold can only be 5. Uh, this is a common trait among most of the Zenonzar Grand Walkers because they are the codemen, so they are like your Aibo in the Zenonzar game itself. So it's a very very nice thing that they brought them at, over as Grand Walkers. And so the Grand Skill 4 for Nodoin is during both players uh, attack step, by sending 4 cores from this Nexus to the Void, you may refresh one of your spirit. Which is not bad. And uh, her Grand Field, level 2, all your spirits can't be bought by opposing spirits of level 1. And all your spirits in the family minion cannot be blocked by opposing spirits level 2. So, 
What does this mean? Um, considering a lot of blockers that are left up by your opponent is relatively small, level 1, it just means that, well, now your stuff is unblockable. Yippee! And if you have your minion, uh, minion spirits, that means uh, if they were to leave out a big blocker for some reason, now your minions can kind of bypass that and be haha, can't block me now! And with a grand skill, it synergizes really nicely, although after you grand skill, you probably won't be able to charge her back to 5 core for the grand field. A uh, 3 core for the grand field because it's relatively expensive and she can only ever hold 5 calls. But that's okay. Sometimes you just keep up for the passive, it's pretty good. So, last but not least, we have our uh, low key, well, I would say high key, the star of Zenonzad, uh, the Alabaster Dragon. So, Alabaster has a relatively unique effect where his reduction symbols can be treated as its colors. Machang Galaxian <laughs> that we recently released. And so, his level 1, 2, 3, during your attack step, if uh, Alabaster was summoned this turn and it made the first attack of this same turn, uh, it can attack without exhausting. Which is not bad because he's already double symbols. Pretty big. So, getting hit, minimum 4 damage. With this being the first attack, it's pretty deadly. And also, his level uh, 3, when uh, at the end of the battle, he sent 3 calls from opponent life to reserve. So basically, right, if you manage to summon this out at level 3 and you swing without exhausting, your opponent might die. <laughs> uh, also, coincidentally enough, he is a ruined dragon. So cards like Granny and uh, what's his name? Garados uh, can make quite a big use of him. And Gilmon being able to search this out is relatively deadly now, considering you can. Uh, Boost call. Uh, you can gain a lot of calls with the Takato Grandfield. Eh, is it Grandfield? Yeah, Takato Grandfield. If you have a Doom One that's attacking, you throw five call, then you shoot two life, right? So the five call can be converted to summoning calls for this spirit as well. Now, now that we have seen all the cards, what do you guys think? Are these gonna shake up the meta that we already have now? Uh, if you like what we do and you enjoy videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to receive notifications on our latest video. <coughs> You can also follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and join our Discord, Discord server. Links in the description below. Uh, where me and the guys will be there on most nights talking about games and other stuff too. I hope everyone is staying safe now with the COVID-19 situation. And we hope to see you again in the next video. Ciao!